It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up for Steph and Gary. Steph and Gary. Hey, Steph. How are you? Hey, Gary. I'm good. How are you? A little nervous. I'm uh, doing something today <laughs> I've never had to do before, and uh, you know exactly what it is, so I'm a little mm -hmm. nervous. How about you? I am doing good, doing good. It's been a busy week, but I'm happy to be here talking to people, whoever's joining us for, on their lunch break, or, you know, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. Just take a minute in the middle of the day to talk well, about We're coming to you, theoretically, live on Twitter, <laughs> YouTube, Vimeo, well, I should say our website, raypubs.com, uh -huh. uh -huh. and my own LinkedIn uh, page. We're coming to you live on all those. And, and, our company is busy with a big giant live event and Steph and I are the only ones not doing something in the event right now. Yeah. So therefore I am not only on air, but I am also production manager <laughs> and doing the, the switching uh -huh. of the graphics and Steph is doing screen sharing and production management as well. So yeah. uh, we're kind of crossing our fingers that we do this right today, but we want to hear from you. We want you to participate in this. If you have questions for us, comments, if you want us to talk about something today or you want our opinion on some new story that's broken in the last week, put it in the chat on uh, LinkedIn and, uh, uh, you know, tell us yeah. what you want us to talk about. Let us know what you yeah. think about these broadcasts. Uh, we, yeah. We're curious. First off, do you want to talk about what happened to you last week? Uh, <laughs> oh, do we got to talk about that already? Yeah, I think it's uh, funny. Okay, <laughs> well. This happened. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm allergic to bees, and uh, and and I got stung, and uh, my ankle turned into a cankle, yeah, rather it did. big. But it got stung when we were on a call with our president and COO. So it was like the three of us talking, we were talking about like business, this and that, what we were going to do with this thing. And then all of a sudden we hear like expletives and then like <laughs> a bunch of like, because you had dropped your phone and then we just keep hearing more like yelling. And then Mandy and I were like, um, what do we do? And then you like pick up for you're like, I'm going to call you guys back. And then you just hang up. <laughs> Well, look, I got stung in my, my leg and I looked, I, I went to get my EpiPen kit and realized it was like five years old. So I'm getting stung and my leg is blowing up. And anyway, we should move on to something much more important than that. Okay, that's fine. I just thought it was funny and I wanted yes. you to share that for my yes. own entertainment only. All right, you but, go ahead. Okay. Sounds great. We can talk about the news now. <laughs> so... First of all, yeah, we've got a lot of launch events coming up, I believe, um, a few launch and learns this month, which you can check on at launch.com if you want to look at what events we have coming up. Other than that, uh, I know ISC London, it's it's begun today, which is exciting, and we have um, a few correspondents who are checking that out for us, and our coverage of London is to come soon. Um, and Cedia released its content overview for the show floor sections in September, which I am so looking forward to Cedia. Like, I can't even explain how excited I am to head to Indianapolis. That's where it is, right? Indianapolis? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. It's, that's it's like, back that's in like one of our it... first. Yeah. It's like one of our first shows that will all be, that like, it'll be like how it used to be, which I think is yeah. why I'm so excited about it. Um, and it's going to be a really interesting year for that because it's going to be like, partially UCC, partially home because of their partnership with the IMCCA. So it's going to be a pretty exciting, like new version of Cedia to get to cover live and be there. And like, I just miss trade shows, man. I just am so excited to just be with people, see the booths, like be like be trade show stressed out. Cause you know, that's just like a different level of stressed out. I miss being that type of stressed out. Well, I am also excited to be going back to live shows. And of course, CDA is back in Indianapolis where the headquarters of CDA Association is. And I'm excited to I'm excited to be going back to the show. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a great event. 
But um, yeah. we're also looking forward to covering Infocom, and we'll be using some yeah. new top secret patent pending technology that we developed uh, along with another brand. Uh, two of us developed it together to cover the show. Yeah. And uh, we'll be doing some big time coverage of the show, but we're going to do something different this year. You'll see, we're going to tell you more about it. We're going to wait a, a little bit to tell you, but we're not going to cover the show like we've been doing in the past. We're going to do something totally new using new technology, and we're going to present it in a different way than we've done in the past. We're very excited about that. But most importantly, you can now register for the show, Steph. You can now register for it. Yeah, that's so exciting. That's like another one that I'm like, oh, I can't wait to be there live. Um, it's just, it's going to be, it's going to be different than, you know, any info comms in the past for obvious reasons, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic. So I think that they're, they're taking some really good precautions and, um, their Epix is making sure that everyone's safe. So that's obviously going to be a little bit different. Um, but I'm just, I'm excited to be there with everyone. I'm excited to see everyone, see how they've been doing. There are so many people that I've met through like launch or, or who have done events with us that I've talk to them and been like, I can't wait to like meet you in person and like, you know, walk around the show floor with you. So like, I'm so excited that I get to meet all of these people that I've kind of met already for over a year to like in person. Yeah. I'm, and I'm just I'm, excited I'm to be back the, at real events. And, uh, and, and but uh -huh. the, the cool thing that Steph's doing at, at Infocom is she's actually going to take the CTS live with all yep. the, Study with Steph buddies. By the way, are the Study with Steph shirts out yet? Are we are we shipping those yet, Steph? They're they are not out yet. So we're we're still working on it. I didn't ask Kelsey about that actually. So Kelsey, if you're watching this, give me my update. But yes. <laughs> but um yeah, no, we're working on it. I think that we were figuring out whether like what kind of rave logo we wanted to put on it, like whether it was gonna be rave pubs or rave radio, like because we wanted rave to be on it somewhere. So I think we were like doing a few different mock-ups and, and putting that with the study with Steph logo. And then we're going to order them and we're going to share them with everyone so they can wear them around. And Well, this is yeah. Gary Kay and Steph Beckett of Rave. And uh, we're doing this new show called Rave TV. This is, I think, our 11th, 10th or 11th episode. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we, we uh, have some really new features of Rave TV coming along thanks to a couple of partners that we're going to add into the mix here. Uh, we'll announce those details probably maybe not the next episode next week, but maybe the week after for sure. Maybe next week. We'll see how those partnerships go. I know, Steph, you, you know what's going on there. We're excited mm -hmm. about it. But there's there's still a lot of news to cover today, uh, yeah. starting with uh, uh, an article from our buddy, Jacob mm -hmm. Blunt. Yep, my best friend, Jacob Blunt. He wrote an article for me about three kind of new viable offerings for houses of worship. So he's just really got his finger on a few different industries, but house of worship is one of them because he kind of works a little bit in the house of worship market occasionally. And he just kind of is really good about listening to what people have wanted as a lot of like worship events have had to go virtual, but now that everyone's going back in person, he's kind of talked about how you can add assistive listening as an option, um, how live streaming solutions, like that's something that a lot of houses of worship have had to turn to over the past year, but how to keep that at the forefront because a lot of people might still want to stream their worship service or like continue doing that through the next few years and how you can utilize uh, digital signage and services. So it's a really good article. Um, I highly recommend giving it a read. He's got um, a few different like stats and stuff that he put in here from the Pew Research Center. So he just he's a really good writer and does a lot of research when he does his writing. So it's it's a very good piece. It's on ravepubs.com. Yep. Check it out. We're coming to you live on ravepubs.com plus we are. Twitter plus LinkedIn. I'm going to show you this brand new camera that I'm using right now. This is the Nav AI from VDO 360. I'm really impressed with it. Uh, that and as I move around, it it uh, it pays attention to me. Oh, so it you can like, see it's got some AI technology in it, so cool. that it frames me up and makes sure that I'm not uh, too big or too small in the window, and kind of knows where I'm going as I move around and and stuff like that. And I'm here at my home office using it, but it's really really small, and I think you'll be really impressed with it uh, when I show you the size of it, Steph. Uh, but we're looking to, you know, we 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 love playing around with new gear. Uh, this is a neat little desktop uh, USB camera that's good enough for a small meeting room. I'll show it to you in just a minute. But let's get back to uh, the news, Steph. 
Okay, Garrett, you wrote this story on a 35,000 nit micro OLED display that this company called Copen, is that how you say it, built? Yep, um, Copen Corporation, yep. That is, yeah, that is pretty cool. Tell me a little bit about it. So it's a proof of concept. It's a, it's a micro OLED display. So, you know, very, very small. It's the size of like a large computer chip uh, on a PC board. So it's, it's probably about the, about uh, about half the size of an iPhone screen, uh, maybe 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 uh, one a little bit larger between one uh, between a third and a half. Um, and uh, but you know it what it's it's the it's the raw component that'd be used in for 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 example different applications would be you know micro displays themselves or projection technology right you know projection mm -hmm. technology using micro OLED. Uh, which you know has black blacks and white whites and just incredible colorimetry, but it could also be used in uh, you know high performance applications. But the most impressive thing is it's thirty five thousand nits, which is you know most monitors. If you look at it from a monitor perspective, so they build a large version of this flat panel display. Most monitors in the five hundred to one thousand, maybe twelve hundred nit. But you're talking about something that's thirty times that or twenty times that bright. That you're talking about something that's very very bright. Um, and, uh, and, and so, you know, it's got a lot of future potential and it's a story you should check out at raypubs.com because, you know, we're always kind of interested in future forward thinking technologies yeah. and, and uh, that's why we put the story on there. Yeah. I can imagine something like this ending up in the case crystal ball for next year, like yeah. something yeah. about more micro OLED displays. Very possible. Um, mm -hmm. Very possible. Yeah. But yeah, next story. So Rise Vision and Sharp NEC Display Solutions, they partner to offer an education digital signage solution, which is exciting. Like I always just like to write about or, or talk about um, partnerships. This one was written by our assistant editor, Katie Clark. Um, but and any partnership that helps out schools, um, they're all going back in person or, or thinking about it or starting to or offering hybrids. So they they need help. They need all the partnerships they can get, I'm imagining. Uh, but this one is just interesting. It's about keeping the classroom connected. And um, they had this like 4K UHD resolution and NEC displays that have partnered with Rise Vision to really it's help built keep in. the classroom. Yep. Yeah. So you don't have to worry students. about separate media players and things mm -hmm. like that. It's a it's a it's a great partnership between uh, the yep. two organizations. And and yep. uh, you know, Rise Vision is a big player in the in the signage market, everyone knows who they are. So yeah, I mean, it's, we're seeing more of these integration and partnerships. Mm -hmm. Integrations like this, they, they also help keep students engaged because the teacher doesn't have to like switch and like do something over here for a minute and then it's not working. Like it's really meant to just like make things easier to use so that like teachers who aren't schooled in all this technology, like can just really just focus on the content and not focus on, Oh God, is my, is my technology going to work today? Like they don't need to worry about that. So yeah, good. good. Yeah. Good to rise vision and sharpen EC. Uh, Gary, do you want to talk about the next one? Yeah. I mean, uh, we're, we we're, blowing, we're blowing through the news stories now. Yeah. We, we all kind of woke up to a surprise yesterday where Biamp had uh, purchased Neats. Now most people in the U S have no idea who Neats is, but Neats is this, really aesthetically pleasing small control system company based in uh in europe they're actually based in denmark, denmark if I remember yeah. correctly. and and they um they were purchased by biamp now so why would biamp do this well biamp is moving closer and closer into the same market that that uh, qsc extron and crestron uh currently dominate uh, kramer's a player in there as well um but uh, rashid scoff who uh who, you know he and i worked together at amx for a couple of years He's a smart guy. He knows the control system market. He knows that that's a piece of the of the glue that he was missing. The next thing that they will do is they will buy a video processing and video distribution company because that's the last piece of the pie that they're missing stuff. So, when you say piece of the pie, like what do you what do you mean? Like what do you think Biamp's like new business goal is? Well, they want to be a solutions provider for the whole system, right? And they have audio galore. They have all the audio mm -hmm. gear out there. They have networking gear. Um, they have specialized um, conference room system stuff. I mean, they've got a lot of that. Obviously, they, they beefed that up last year. Um, they yeah. have a platform for AV over IP. Uh, they now have control. The piece that they're missing is they don't have every kind of video distribution uh, piece right now. And, and yeah, I could see them buying other companies as well. In the meantime, I could see them buying, uh, you know, or partnering 
uh, at a deeper level with a, you know, a company that's, you know, maybe it's a mount company, maybe it's a, uh, you know, I think that what they want to do is they want to own all pieces of the glue. The pieces that they don't have is, is network infrastructure, right. And video distribution. Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean by that. Okay. No, that makes sense. Um, I just, I just like to know what all the companies are doing, you know, I yeah. feel like you've well, got I mean, a really good finger on the industry. Like you just, you've been in the industry so long that you kind of know what everything's about. Where I was, well, I, certainly I, Rashid, he told me he was going to be buying more companies and that was thing, but he's not going to tell us who they're going to buy. Like I oh, had no sure. idea they were going to buy meats and uh, yeah, but, but obviously, you know, it's, it's uh it's a good move for them. I mean, yeah. Biamp is a you know a very well respected company. They have the Devio product line. You may remember from the early days of conferencing. They have a lot more conference products than they've ever had before. Uh, audio over network, they've got everything. Video over the network, they've got some of it, and then the network control side of it, they needed. So Neats was a good investment for them. Yeah, for sure. Well, the next story is a little bit sad, but I figured that you'd want to take a couple minutes and kind of talk about it, just because. Um, we put this up and then a lot of um, people have, have added comments and stuff to the story. And it's, it's just been really nice. So I thought that you might want to take a few minutes and, and talk yeah, about it's, it. It's, uh, you know, Haggai Geffen from Geffen, the company Geffen. Um, he passed away la- over the weekend uh, and and um, or late last week, I should say. And uh, he lived in California. He started Geffen. Uh, they sold to uh, Panduit, I think is the one of the Panduit brands, if I remember correctly. I, maybe I could be wrong on that. But they he sold, obviously stayed involved. But, you know, Haggai is one of those guys that if you needed to understand a technology really well, he understood the technology. He was really good at educating people on how things worked. He was the first person that really made a big investment in digital video uh, as an accessory company. He started more on the residential side than on the commercial side, but he's certainly really well known. But most importantly, he was just a really, really nice guy. I mean, like everybody really liked him. Um, nobody ever, you know, he, I don't know that he had any enemies he had competitors, but but no enemies out there. Yeah. And, you know, anytime a pioneer in our industry passes away, you know, uh, it gets noticed by his his friends and foes. But you could see uh, down on the bottom of that story, uh, there are a number of uh, there are a number of um, comments from people who wanted to make comments and oh, felt yeah. like they needed to share information about him. So there's that's his family. That's I think yeah. they said it was his last family photo. But you'll see a number of people in the industry who have commented on the on the piece as well and. Uh, you know, he's just a good guy and it's an unfortunate loss, but you know, the older I get, the more of these that happen, it's yeah. just the cycle of life. And, uh, but, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, rest in peace. He did, a, he did, he did some unique stuff in our industry. It's always sad when someone who just like touches so many people in the industry passes away because like you just, all the comments and all the love and support that have come out of you just really shows like, what a kind and, and good person he was that so many of people that he maybe he hasn't talked to in a long time still wanted to come forward and talk about memories they had shared with him. So it's, it's a Definitely. nice story. And that like everything else is on rave pubs. If you'd like to go read it, it's a very nice tribute to him. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking uh, of rave pubs. Yep. For our um, case study of the week that I just do every week, I'd just like to go through and, and pick a case study that we've posted during the week just to kind of bring those to light a little bit because I think that those are fun reads just as much as some of our product and industry news stories. Um, but this one is from Bibitech. So Bibitech displays were chosen by this program in Ireland to be kind of like education other than at school it's like a sin these are like a type of center in ireland and uh these panels were put in there which is by one of uh, vivitex like reseller installation kind of partners um IMAX, but i think it was imax yeah yeah so they were put in there to cater to kids who don't who like find them like mainstream education challenging and like maybe just need a little help learning extra stuff. I think it's kind of similar to like a Sylvan learning center or one of those learning centers in the U S. Um, but those were installed in there to kind of give students like some hands-on experience to, um, help them kind of like go over like some subjects that they were having trouble with. And I just thought it was a pretty neat idea and a pretty neat program and uh, yeah, this is like everything else is on Ray Pubs if you want to go read the whole case study. Uh, but I thought it was pretty neat. Yeah. So uh, as um, I promised, I thought I promised that I would show you the 
camera that I'm using, and we've got a couple of comments. I don't know if you want to take go grab and look at some of the comments while I'm showing this, but real quickly, yep. let me uh, show you this camera here so you get an idea how small it is and what it looks like. Uh, it's very, very small. It's a very small uh, USB camera. It's USB-C, as you can see. Um, it hides a mount for a monitor, uh, but it is very high resolution. It's got AI technology, and it's following me around as I'm as I've been broadcasting today. today and uh, I thought, you know, hey, Video 360 makes it, and uh, I think they're distributed. Yeah. I know they're distributed by Almo. In fact, uh, so you should check it out for the size. I mean, the AI that's in this is pretty good, and I haven't spent any time setting it up. It came with a software package. I haven't had a chance to load the software package. So this is straight out of the box, Steph. That's oh, you like things that you don't have to read the instructions to like make work, which I which makes sense, right? Because yeah, you're you're pretty techno technologically savvy. Uh, I would say I'm pretty technologically savvy as well. Like most people in our office are, but um, a good point that you make a lot of the time is like you shouldn't have to be technologically savvy to get some like consumer technology to work. Like it should be pretty self explanatory, and if it's not, like. That's probably something that they should look at. Uh, so yeah, I agree. Just kind of pulled that out of the box and plugged it in, and it worked. Like that's that's actually really handy and really cool. Yeah, and there's a lot of adjustments that I you know I, I could have spent some time doing some adjustments on and syncing some of the audio because I can you can also sync it with your audio source and things like. I just didn't mm -hmm. have time. I just literally got it today, plugged it in. Yeah, just in time for our broadcast. And I was more worried about making sure that I could make this broadcast work because unfortunately we don't have our normal producer in the background, Madeline. She's no. busy with the client uh, project. This is a very, very big client project. We'll tell you about it next week. Right now we're sworn to secrecy, but one of the biggest companies in our industry is doing a three day event and uh, they're using our platform launch to do it. And, uh, and so far so good. And they're, they're very happy, but uh, Steph, I love doing this show for you. Are we done? Are yeah. we, did we cover everything we're supposed well, to cover? Uh, Pam hey, made a good comment. He said that micro OLED displays would be especially useful in DSLR viewfinders, which is a really good point. That's not, I didn't think of that usage for them, but that's a good idea. And phones, also in phones. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah and the, phones. Like, like yeah, would you think like, like your iPhone screen? Yeah, yeah, much higher resolution micro yeah. phone screens, uh, you know, or potentially um, a second screen. Like, can you imagine putting, you have your normal phone screen on one side, a micro LED screen on the other side uh, uh, that tells you who's calling and things like that, or you use it as a two-sided yeah. display. Uh, that's but, uh, that's yeah, fair. A lot of, a lot of cool applications my, like that. My last thing is not exactly AV, um, but it is, it's something. Um, so <laughs> this is my internet moment of the week. I've decided that I'm going to start doing this where, because I just spend a lot of time on Twitter. So this is kind of like me telling you what's going on with the internet. Is this people. from the National Enquirer? <laughs> no, this is, is from the New York. This is the New York Post. So it's like. So what is in York. the sandwich if there's no tuna in the tuna sandwich? It's like, okay, yeah. So basically, there were some rumors that got started that the tuna at Subway is not tuna. And so they did some lab tests, and apparently, there's no identifiable tuna DNA in a Subway sandwich. What's but it? I think, what is it? Like, I don't know. You know how, like, the fake crab that you can buy at the yeah. grocery store is, like, not crab, but it's just like. I don't know, crab, crab adjacent. Like, I think it's like fish adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not eating so, tuna sandwiches from Subway anymore. I mean, okay, <laughs> I will tell you I've never eaten a tuna sandwich at Subway. Because, I have, like, I have. It well, tastes like tuna, but it tastes like what it, what I perceive as tuna because they said it was tuna, probably. I don't but know. Like, maybe, maybe if I tasted it like actually yeah. tasted it, not thinking too, not figure out what it is. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. Like who are we to say what is tuna and what is not? But like, I, I'm just saying like, I already don't eat fish at like certain places because like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why yeah. am I going to eat fish at a chain? Like that seems a little suspicious. Well, I, I've always said you go to McDonald's, you get a hamburger, right? You go to yes, Chick-fil-A, okay. you get a chicken sandwich. You know, you go to Subway. I don't know. Maybe they shouldn't have tuna. Right? What is it? Just is it? Is it? Is it? Is it McDonald's that has like a fillet of fish, or is that Burger right. King or something? No, they have like, fillet of fish at McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, why would you order that? Like, I don't know that that's fish. That might just be like plastic that looks like fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We, but like, on that I, note, we got to get out of here. Yeah, I know. So, all right. We have to take a time talking about fish. All right. 
Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. It's the weekly show about pro AV with the hottest news in the AV industry. It's Rave TV. Give it up for Steph and Gary. Steph and Gary.